Okay, everybody, welcome back to my shop. I hope you guys enjoyed the build for this linen press or this low cabinet. Today, we're going to be starting on the distressed paint job. It's a four-part process. We're going to be using two different kinds of milk paint and a polyurethane. So I'm going to start off with two undercoats of a gray primer milk paint. And then we're going to move to a polyurethane that's going to protect that. And then we're going to use the white milk paint on top of the polyurethane so that when we sand through the white, it's going to expose the gray underneath without burning through to the wood. So let's get started. Now this is the first of two of the primer coats. This is Siegel Gray Milk Paint. Now you can see why I chose uh, red oak for the top because they want a really weathered old barn looking top and red oak has a very open grain. It's just going to suck in that paint and give it that weathered look without hiding the grain. So even after I do the two coats of the gray, you're going to see that this is really just going to look like 40-year-old barn wood. It's a really nice touch. I also want to mention that you saw me thin down the paint with just about 10% water. Now, that's going to make it more sprayable because milk paint, uh, well, the general finish is milk paint anyway, is pretty thick. So if you water it down a little bit, it's just perfectly ready to spray. You also want to make sure that when you're spraying paint or any kind of finish that you're using a very light spray pattern. You're just misting the first coat. You don't want to do a heavy wet mill, so you want to just build the coats lightly and do less and build more over time. You don't want to do a heavy coat and then have drips and runs. It could ruin the work piece. I'm just giving it a light sanding so that I can put the second coat of the gray milk paint. And now the second coat of the gray milk paint you can see has much better coverage as it goes on. All right, guys, so now we sprayed yesterday two coats of the, the base, which is a Siegel Gray milk paint. Now, the reason I laid down a base first is not only to give it a prime coat on the raw wood itself, but what we're going to be doing as the next coat is going to be a white color, which will be, you know, the final color of this, but that's going to be distressed with some sanding through on the edges and parts where it's going to take the paint off and we want the gray to show underneath. But to do that, effectively without burning through and actually showing the wood through the gray paint and the white paint we need to put a layer of protection between those now i'm going to spray two coats of a clear poly and that's going to act as my barrier all right now we're spraying two coats of the clear polyurethane over the gray milk paint which was the prime coat i'm going to let that dry i'm going to sand it down in between coats 220 then we'll be ready for the top coat Okay, so the polyurethane's dried. We sanded in between each coat 220. Now we're spraying the first coat of the Snow White milk paint. This is going to be the final color of the piece. Now just keep in mind that if you don't have a spray gun, you can do this whole process with a brush and a, or a roller and it'll come out just as good. Okay guys, so I sprayed two coats of the Snow White milk paint. So now that it's had a chance to dry, which I've only let it dry for about a half an hour, I could let it fully dry out for an hour, but we really don't need to because we're gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper and we're gonna knock off any high spots, but in the same process of knocking off the high spots, I'm gonna hit the corners a little extra in certain spots and I want to take off some of that paint while it's still a little fresh, exposing some of the gray underneath. Now we're not going to go crazy because they don't want it too distressed. Now 
And here's a quick shot of how the distressing looks with the paint removed and the gray showing through. And now to spray three coats of polyurethane and I'm going to sand in between each coat with 400 grit sandpaper and then the unit will be done We'll put it all together. Okay guys, so really quick, before we get started putting the doors and the top on, this is uh, what the distressing looks like up close. Just to give you an idea, you can see it's sanded off on mostly on the corners and some light scuffing and everything on the sides. They wanted some mid-panel scuffing. And you can really see now the, the process of how the gray shows through. Let's see if I can back up and focus a little bit better. You can see how the gray shows through under the white. That's why we went through that process. Here are the doors, which are the main focus. And you look, you can see the distressing on the corners. You can really see how this gray shows through from underneath the white. And that's because we put that protection there at uh, two layers of the poly, which created a barrier that prevented us from burning through to the wood. So you can see how that's sanded through and the gray is really popping out, making this look like it's been, you know, really scuffed up in the areas where people might, you know, have touched it and things like that. But it's not overly done because they didn't want it to, you know, to be like too busy. So, all right, let's start mounting these doors, putting the glass back, the hinges and everything and the handles. Before I install the hinges on the doors, I have to slightly mortise them with a hammer and chisel. This way they give me a nice fit and the doors can close evenly with an even reveal. I'll get started by pre-drilling with a VIX bit and mounting the hinge on the door first. Then I'll shim the door in place and mark the hinge location on the cabinet. I'll take the hinges off the doors, bring them back to the cabinet, put them at the marked locations, pre-drill with the VIX bit and screw them into place again. All I have to do now is bring the doors back over and screw them into the pre-drilled holes and everything should line up. Okay, so after we mortised out for the hinge with the chisel, now I have a perfect fit. They're not binding. Both doors operating perfectly. And my reveal is still perfect. So. Now we're going to install some magnets so that they stay closed if the floor is on level and then we'll install the top and then we'll put the glass back in, put the handles on, wrap it up. Attach the top, I'm going to drill oversized slotted holes and use cabinet screws from the inside. And those oversized holes will allow for seasonal movement and expansion and contraction from the top. Okay guys, this was a really fun build. I am exhausted. I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning. I went to work and then I came home and put the finishing touches on this and now it's 11 p.m. So I'm pretty exhausted. Tomorrow, I'm gonna install it in the client's bathroom. So we're gonna bring it to him tomorrow. I'm gonna to send him a picture tonight, let him know it's done. And then that's it. And then I'll take some pictures of it sitting where it's gonna sit in its new home. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the finishing process. If you haven't seen the first video on how I actually built the whole thing, then I'm gonna link it in the bottom. Go ahead and watch that video. That's part one. This is the second part, which was the finish, the finishing touches, the distressing of the paint, all the different process with the polyurethane, installing the handles, the hinges, and the top, and everything. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button, and I'll see you next time in the shop.